transphobia, hate, humiliation, and sometimes even outright cruelty. I think that everyone who has anything to do with the LGBT community has thought about it at least once, and maybe even encountered it in real life. I don't want to offend anyone, but it seems to me that this problem affects us transgender people much more than others because of our external characteristics. So is it really that bad? Is it really impossible to avoid being exposed to these horrible things, or at least minimize the likelihood of encountering them? That's what I want to talk about in my video. In recording this video, I want to share my experience of overcoming things like transphobia and other negativity. Maybe it will be useful for someone else. It helped me. Maybe someone can take something useful from it for themselves. This is not an instruction manual or a ready-made recipe. First of all, I am not a professional in these matters. And secondly, as it seems to me, there is no universal recipe that would be suitable for everyone. We are all different. We have different destinies, different life circumstances, different organisms after all. I believe that everyone should make an individual plan of action for themselves. I hope that my experience will be useful. Sit down comfortably. Let's begin. Hey guys, my name is Evgenia. I'm a transgender woman. I live in Russia. For many people, the phrase, I live in Russia, will sound like a sentence. But as you can see, I'm alive. Now I talk about it with a smile. But when I made the decision to make the transgender transition, I was not having fun at all. It was a long time ago. About five years ago, I knew exactly what kind of country I was living in, what kind of society I was surrounded by, and I was scared, very scared. But stronger than fear was my dream. I couldn't afford to deprive my heart of the opportunity to be happy. So I decided not to give up, but to fight against the circumstances. Now, I will tell you in detail about what I came up with. What can I do to avoid transphobia and hate? Five years ago, it echoed in my head. Now asking myself again after a long time and having traveled this path, I realized that I made the right decisions then and I was not mistaken. I want to say that the option, I don't care what I look like. I don't care what you think about me. Accept me as I am. Was not acceptable to me at first. Then I thought, it can't be that there is no solution to this problem. After all, all difficulties can be overcome. The most important thing is to find a solution. And I began to think about it, a lot of thinking. Next, I will tell you exactly what plan I made for myself. No details. If the details will be interesting to you, write in the comments and I will tell you about it in a separate video. In order to fight the problem, you need to study it in detail first. I asked myself the question, what is it about people that provokes a negative reaction towards us? Why does this sometimes happen? Trying to find answers to these questions, I conditionally divided all people into three groups. The third group are not villains. They treat us well. There is no need to fight them in any way. The second group are people who absolutely do not care who we are. It's important to them that we don't annoy them visually and everything will be okay. Let's be honest with ourselves. If there's a 100% male walking down the street in women's clothing, it's not a very pleasant sight. Don't attack me for saying this. I'm just trying to look at reality without rose-colored glasses. Agree. 
never absolutely everyone around you will accept it. And finally, the most dangerous group. First on my list, these are the people who live in a hetero framework. Anything beyond that term is a perversion to them and must be destroyed. These are the kind of people who write to me in the comments that I will burn in hell. Oh, well, I realize that the biggest problem is in appearance, the visual perception that people have of me. I set a goal for myself, to make it as much as possible so that people around me do not realize who I really am. And as a minimum, at least to look decent, not to irritate and not to cause unpleasant emotions in people around me. Five years ago, I came to these conclusions. And now, I am sure that I was not wrong. I made a list for myself of what I should do to achieve this result. Not what I can do, but what I must do. I assume the skeptics will say to me, it's very easy to just talk about it. But to realize it in real life is quite another matter. I will not argue with that. I was well aware that this is a very difficult task. Five years ago, I didn't know if I could realize my plan or not. Of course, I didn't know how my body would react, how things would turn out in the future. I didn't know how my age would affect it. I started HRT when I was 50. Almost 51. I'm almost 53 now. Now, five years later, I realize I did it. And I really want to share my experience with you. I really want to be useful to someone. And I also want to tell the skeptics, it didn't cost a lot of money. No one sponsored me. My story is not about money. It's about labor, daily, systematic and hard work, every day for three years. Before we begin, I want to show you something. This photo was taken three years before I started my transgender transition. This photo is three years later just before I started hormone therapy. The difference between the two is not very obvious. I understand that. But at that time, I was still living a very different life and had to hide a lot of things. With the beginning of transgender transition in my apartment, I was already living a full-fledged female life. Here you can see the results of my three-year preparation very well. The difference between these photos is about two months. It was during this period that I saw very well that all my labors were not in vain. I saw that I had not worked on myself in vain. If I had just waited for a miracle, I would have looked like in the first photo. And now, of course, with my appearance, everything would be much sadder. Since I had quite a lot of time before starting hormone therapy, I decided to divide this period into stages. In the process of creating my list of procedures, I realized that some of them I could start now and some of them I would have to postpone until later. So, the first one is long term. Three years before the transgender transition. The second one is half a year before I start taking hormones. The third is from the start of HRT to my transition to full time. And additionally, I assumed for myself that there would be a fourth phase. This is the period of adaptation after the transition to full-time. I would like to point out a very important point. Everything that I will talk about further makes sense only in case of systematic fulfillment of the activities listed below. Without regularity, they have no meaning and you will not achieve the necessary results. I'm gonna keep it superficial, in general terms. I don't want to go into details now because the video will be very long. You'll get bored and fall asleep. And I don't want that. I want you to watch to the end. Especially because at the end, I will tell you a story that will illustrate very well what I have told you in this video. If you find any question interesting and worthy to make a separate and more detailed video about it, write about it in the comments and I will definitely do it. I walked over to the mirror. Uh, I looked at myself very carefully. And I did that very, very, very many times. And each time I literally wrote down on a piece of paper exactly what I needed to change about myself. So there is a huge list of problems that I have to deal with. The first and most difficult problem, in my opinion, 
is the quality of my skin, men's skin, age skin. I realized that to transform it is a very difficult task. That's why I started to solve this problem in the first place. Thankfully, I had almost three years to spare. Since I couldn't find any ready-made schemes, I had to choose methods and means on my own. And because of the lack of large finances, I took simple folk methods as a basis, which, by the way, turned out to be very effective. The second task I had to struggle with was to reduce muscle mass without losing fat mass. Additionally, I worked on modeling the female figure. I chose my own exercise and nutrition regimen. I read a lot, studied the issue, experimented. The process consisted of physical exercises and a special diet. I followed it very strictly and for three years, I strictly followed the rules I had drawn up. It is good that I was able to start working on this issue in advance, as it is a rather slow process. Besides, at that time I was living a man's life, and these changes were not noticeable from the outside and people around me did not have any questions. I will not hide it. At that time, it did not seem very important to me. But five years later, I realized that I was wrong, and I am very glad that I did not put this issue aside at that time. The third challenge I set for myself was to combat muscular facial features. Of course, I realized that the effects of hormone therapy would eventually take its toll on my face. Plus, the bones and shape of my skull wouldn't change anyway, but I needed to get through the initial period of trans transition, and it was impossible to do without working on feminizing my face. What did this process involve? Practicing decorative makeup skills, mastering the skills of masking the muscular forms of the skull, finding ways to hide the parts of my face that I didn't want people to notice. Yes, disguising. It was the only thing I could afford back then. I couldn't afford any surgeries, so I decided to go in that direction. And I think I did a pretty good job of it. The fourth task is to work on facial expressions, movements, gaze. I firmly believe that it is the small details that make up a complete image. It is not in vain that they often say, the devil is in the little things. Yes. In my heart has always lived a woman. But it so happened that for so many years I lived a completely different life, with different rules, with different manners, in a different body. I really wanted to get rid of it. I realized it was something I needed to work on. I began to observe and analyze any small details inherent in female behavior, to observe them, to record them for myself, and to practice them. Now my behavior is completely natural, but at that time I clearly understood that I had to work on it. And again, three years later, I realized how important it was to do it then. But more on that later. Two important things. I almost forgot to mention the job and the voice. I was very well aware that during the transition, everything would be very difficult with work. The ideal solution to this issue for me would be remote work. So I started to create it, literally. I acquired a new profession, which with the start of hormone therapy, allowed me to work from home. It was also during this period that I began to change my voice. There are many ways, but I chose self-study with the help of a special app. Two and a half years flew by in such worries. Half a year was left before the start of hormone therapy. During this period, I actively started to deal with the following issues. One, laser hair removal, searching for a device that would fully satisfy me, finding a master who would not refuse to work with me. Two, searching for a cosmetology clinic and making a plan for deep hardware cosmetology procedures. Three, Searching for a master who would give me a primary feminization of my face. We are talking about fillers. I realized that it would inevitably need to be done. And the most interesting thing is that during this period, I started to live a full-fledged woman's life at home. And I started to let all my developments for the previous two and a half years out. 
What used to be training now became part of my everyday life. Here comes the day I took hormones for the first time. The third phase of my transgender transition timeline has begun. A very inspiring phase for me. Because of the New Year's holidays, I started doing all of my scheduled procedures in mid-January. They were not done quickly, about four and a half months on a predetermined schedule. What I did during this period, one, fillers modeled my cheeks, lips, and nasolabial folds. Two years later, I have not done anything else to these areas of my face. Two, I did a whole complex of apparatus cosmetologic procedures, a lot of different ones, through pain, rehabilitation, tears, and of course, I've completely started to let go of everything that's in my heart, everything that I've been working on for the past three years, and miracles began to happen. I'm not exaggerating. Things started to happen that I didn't expect at all. Yes, that was exactly the magic for me. Everything started happening very suddenly and very quickly. I couldn't stop marveling at the changes that were happening literally every day. For you to be able to imagine it, I can only say that I hope to go to a full-fledged female mode of life in at least one year. And in fact, it happened in five months. And not because I was rushing things. What happened was that I couldn't go on living in my old form. It was as fast as a snow avalanche in the mountains. And only then I clearly realized that if it had not been for such a serious and long preparation, none of this would have happened. I want to repeat, this is my story only. This does not mean that my recipe will work for everyone around me. But in my situation, at my age, it worked. It all sounds so easy and simple. Yeah, it's easy for me to talk about now. A lot of people will think it was just as easy five years ago. Maybe nine years ago, I moved to a completely different country, leaving behind everything I had before. I started life from scratch. I moved with two small children. They're grown up now. They have accepted me, love and support me. No support, no sponsors, no gifts or help. The money I spent during my transgender transition I had been saving for about four years. Please don't post in the comments that it's not possible. It is possible. You just need not only to want, but also to actually do something to achieve your goal. Everything is simple, really. If you do not look for excuses for yourself and overcome your laziness. I am often asked to give some advice. And in the process of communicating, I very often realize that I'm not talking to a woman at all. In such cases, I feel like asking these people, why do you even need all this? Guys, a woman is not about tits. A woman is first of all about the heart, about the soul, about the inner world. No hormones can create that inside you. If you were born with this, Break down the walls, work on yourself, work and everything will be. If you don't, you'll end up with a genderless transgender person who will constantly resent society for not accepting him for who he is. Is that a harsh thing to say? Yes. Unfortunately, the truth is often not very pleasant and sometimes even cruel. Don't scold me. It's my opinion. I'm entitled to it. In closing, I want to tell one story that happened to me. This is the only time when I really face transphobia and indirectness. One day, I was walking down the street. Two men were walking towards me. They stopped and asked me, excuse me, are you a woman? I said, as if nothing had happened. Of course. I answered and smiled sweetly and sincerely. One man apologized and moved on. And the other man said to me, I understand who you are. I wanted to do something bad to you first. But now, you're great. You're great. You look great and you're doing great. Good luck to you. Said that and walked away. I was scared, of course. But then I realized that our looks and the way we present ourselves are probably crucial. That's it, guys. It's important to work on yourself. I sincerely wish everyone good luck. To some good luck in finding yourself. 
some in achieving their dreams. I would really like my experience to be useful to someone. Don't judge my video harshly. It's just a story about my life and my story of transgender transition. Ask questions in the comments. I'll be sure to answer them all. And forgive me for my not so good English. Believe me, I try very hard not to offend this beautiful language with my pronunciation. Once again, I wish everyone, everyone, everyone good luck and happiness, everyone.